giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First Updates Now FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Best of the West. Some more West powerhouses took the field in week two, helping to heat up the competition. With events in California, Oregon, Washington, and British Columbia, we've got plenty of events to break down, as well as five more to look forward to this coming week. Coming up, we'll also give you the top ten teams from the West in week two, and give our perspective on how this game is shaping up. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Clint Ott. I'm Bryce Croucher. And I'm Aiden Ferrer. All right, we've got a lot to cover, guys, so uh, let's hop right into some of this week's recaps. All right. In the Wilsonville district, uh, we certainly had no lack of excitement. The qual- qualification rounds were dominated by a few strong climbers, including 4057, Kalamath Basin Robotics, who seated eighth with a record of 7, 8, and 1, 6443 Aimbot, who amazed the crowd with their roll onto the HAB level 3 climber. And the top seed, 1540, the Flaming Chickens, who took the number one seed in a dominating fashion and achieving an average ranking score of 3.0, without the ability to even reach the top of the rocket. There are a number of likely candidates for the Flaming Chickens' first pick, but it ultimately went to 4043, the Nerd Herd, who was probably the competition's most consistent low-scoring robot, with something like an everybody on steroids robot design. And their second pick fell to 5198, Night Tech. The second seed then selected 2990 Hotwire and stole 5085 Lakerbots on the way back up the Serpentine. Going into the semifinals, the first seed looked poised to win the event without question. But the number five captain, 1425, error code zero, had other plans in mind. After three hard fought matches, including the second with a one point victory margin, the Blue Alliance pulled off the upset on the backs of 1425's show stopping defense. In the finals, they faced off against the number two seed, who took on a peculiar strategy of sending their captain, 6443, to play counter defense against 1425, which seemed so surprisingly, which seemed to work surprisingly well for them, as the Five Alliance was defeated in straight matches with scores of 38 to 63 and 66 to 71. So, congratulations to the and the Blue Banners go to 6443 Aimbot. 2990 Hotwire, and 5085 Lakerbots. In addition, a huge win for a second-year team, uh, 6831 AO5 Annex, who won the Engineering Inspiration Award, and consistent contender 4125 Confidential took home the chairmans. Meanwhile, up at Auburn Mountain View, uh, the tall robots showed off a lot of promise. With 2046 bare metal, completing the first non-penalty rocket RP in the Pacific Northwest District. 1983 Skunk Works, showing some major improvements since their last competition just a week ago. At the end of qualification, Spare Metal dominated the leaderboard with a 3.0 weight average ranking score and picked up the number two seed Skunk Works to join their alliance. And 32-37 Event Horizon as their second round pick. In strangely similar story to Wilsonville, the number one alliance looked like a dominant force in the playoffs after the quarterfinal rounds. However, it was an electrical problem that plagued the top alliance at this event, leading Skunk Works to play the second semifinal match by themselves, and Bare Metal to be switched with a backup bot, 1294 Top Gun, in the third match. With these struggles, the number one alliance succumbed to the number four of 948 NRG, 3574 high techers and 4060 bearcat robotics. So it was an unlikely mac- matchup of number four versus number two alliances in the finals, with captain of the number two being 5827 Code Purple, 2976 Sparta Bots, and rookie team 2097 Phoenix Force being the new favorites. The number two alliance was able to take the first match with a slim margin of 66 to 64. 
Second and third matches both fell once again to the underdogs, though, with final scores of 60-50 to 50 and 51-48. to 48. So the new owners of the Blue Banners were 948 NRG, 3574 High Techers, and 4060 Bearcat Robotics, in addition to 2557 Soda Bots for winning the District Chairman's Award. An additional congratulations go to the all-girls team, 5588 Rain Robotics, for their win in the District Engineering Inspiration Award. Nicely done from them. Well, moving down all the way down the West Coast uh, to the San Diego Regional, the Del Mar Fairgrounds have been through a crazy two weekends, the most recent a little less rain-soaked than last. 47 teams fought their way through quals, many seeing competition for the first time, and a few looking to continue their victories from week one. Taking the second and fourth seeds were a couple of the more practiced teams coming into week two, 812 Midnight Mechanics and 4481 Rembrandts, respectively. But it was Team 987 High Rollers rolling in from Vegas who would claim the number one seed, opting to take the fairgrounds as defending champs 3647 Millennium Falcons along for the wild ride of Elims, as well as second-year Team 6995 Nomad. The quarterfinals went about as quickly as usual, but every set afterwards would be pushed to a grueling three matches. Though most of these matchups played out in favor of the higher-ranked alliances, the number six alliance of 2839 to Dallas, 6695 Alpha Knights, and 3245 Ravens upset not just the number three alliance in quarterfinals, but the number two alliance in the semis as well. After match one of the number one versus number six finals, 987 and co. seemed set to win with scores of 78 to 62, but the number six alliance brought things back in finals two with a score of 51 to 67 in their favor. The number one alliance turned the tides back in their favor in match three, securing victory with scores of 78 to 64. Between 987's Hall of Fame status, 3647's back-to-back wins, and the auto wildcard at every event, all six teams in the finals qualified for Houston. Congrats to them, along with 1622 Team Spider, who walked away with not only a Dean's List finalist and a Woody Flowers finalist award, but the Regional Chairman's Award as well. Dang. A huge shout out to Team 7626 NLHS from Taipei, who walked away with the Rookie All Star Award, and 2485 Warlords for taking home the Silver Engineering Inspiration Medals. Wow. 1622 getting it done this weekend. They That's... had a crazy run of awards. I don't That's know how they nuts. did Elims. I don't think they made Elims, but they had an amazing awards run. That's awesome. Yeah. And well, up in uh, Victoria, British Columbia at the Save on Foods Memorial Center, the Canadian Pacific Regional played host to a diverse range of teams. Going into the event, well over half the teams had played in fewer than three FRC seasons. The lack of experience didn't detract from the overall level of play, though, which was pushed along by some experienced frontrunners, most notably 359 the Hawaiian kids, who, after playing in week one at Del Mar, were able to secure themselves the top spot. With their first pick, they grabbed rookie team 7478 Wingus and Dingus out of New Zealand. Favorite name. <laughs> that is a pretty good name. Uh, Wingus and Dingus had actually just previously given 359 their only loss in qualification rounds. Um, the second pick of the number one alliance was also a rookie team, Team 7796 Burnett Robotics. The Hall of Fame led alliance was able to quickly navigate through the quarters and into the semifinals where they dispatched a strong fourth alliance led by 4334, who tried to implement a risky one offensive robot strategy. Um, they had one robot playing defense, one playing counter defense. It uh, did not work out too well for them. <laughs> in the final, in the uh, in the finals, the first alliance went up against the second seed of the alliance of 846, the Funky Monkeys out of California, 6364 10-ton robotics, and 4627 Manning robotics. The first finals match was a close contest with heavy defense on both sides of the field. 846 captains of the second alliance got high centered on a ball and cost themselves and their partners some valuable cycling time while they tried to get off the ball and ended up falling 68 to 63, a very narrow margin. Ooh. The second finals match played out very similarly in defensive fashion, but the quickness of Wingus and Dingus and the consistency of the Hawaiian kids could not be denied as they closed it out 76 to 69. Big shout out to winners of the Regional Chairman's Award 2438 Iobotics, who took home the award for the first time in their team history. Congratulations also to 6390 Hephaestus on back to back Canadian Pacific EI Awards and to 7787 Reynolds Raybots for the Rookie All Star Award. Aiden, I heard a lot of chatter this weekend. Uh, tell me, what was going on in Central Valley? 
Oh, man. Well, Clint, all eyes were on Fresno this past weekend as 49 teams from across NorCal and beyond packed into the convention center for their shot at week two glory. Nearly every team at the event was making their debut for Destination Deep Space, but everyone's attention was focused on how teams 1323, Madtown Robotics, and 1678 Citrus Circuits would fare in this early event. Citrus brought a lot of exciting play and ranking points to their matches, holding a ranking point average of uh, 3.0 over their 10 matches, but it was 1323 who would take the lead this time, going 10-0 in quals and maintaining a cool 3.5 ranking average. Other than these two teams, it was anyone's game for the other six top spots in Elims. Team 5026 Iron Panthers clawed their way to the next highest spot, securing themselves in third, also with a 3.0 average, same as Citrus, but falling short of Citrus in cargo and hatch panel over all scores, so that tiebreaker is what set them down just a little bit lower. Naturally, Madtown and Citrus chose to buddy up for Elims. Speaking of names, like what would you even call that alliance? Like Mad Citrus, Angry Limes? I, I personally like Sour Town. Um, Along with Sour Town. Rookie, yeah, Sour Town Alliance. Uh, Sour Town picked uh, rookie team 7663 Sleuth Robotics, while 5026 went for some more old hat picks like 1072 Harker Robotics and 4135 the Iron Patriots. Both alliances cruised their way to the finals, where the number one alliance would take both matches 93 to 73 and 94 to 57. Though Elims may have played out fairly standard, this event was anything but, with a couple of notable no- moments, like 1678's successful triple climb. Uh, although 5026 made a close attempt, they tried picking someone up in quals, and they were just a little shy of clearing the hab. Um, Citrus also holds the current penalty-free world record of 107 points, which is pretty amazing. Um, 5026's wild card was also a huge first for them, as it's the first time they're officially qualifying for uh, Houston, they've gone off the wait list before, but this is the first time that they've gone off of the robot, um, which is really incredible. They've been getting better every year. So great job to them. Huge props to you guys for setting the bar so high in week two. You and Citrus as well. Um, Citrus didn't stop there, though, as they walked out of CVR this year with the double gold cling bling after their second Chairman's Award win. Not only a huge moment for them, but the double qualification created another wild card, which was enough to send 1072 to Houston for the second year in a row. Congrats to them, as well as 585 Cyber Penguins for their EI win, and 7589 Li Blue Magpie from Taipei for their AR, uh, RAS win, rookie all star. I think Tyler's got something for us on that. Yeah, actually, no, I just want to point out this clip that we have up on screen with uh, Citrus doing the climb. Watch uh, Corsetto in the background, because you're going to see that 1678 uh, does the climb, but the drivers l- take their hands off the controllers as the arm is still uh, touching the ground. Watch Corsetto right here. Like, he totally flips because he notices it. Look at this. Oh, no. Because, like, I mean, if they would have left it there, that wouldn't have counted, right? Like, that would have been yeah. crazy. So, I, I just oh, don't. Man. Like, I've watched this a million times. I never noticed that. Um, and then as we just watched this clip again, I, I saw him in the background. I'm just like, oh, man. Like, you know, the kids are all celebrating. He's just like, no. Like, you know, you got to go, go back to that clip, actually, Tyler. Yeah. Uh, if you want to pull that back on the screen, you can see like the exact moment on Mike's face where his soul just leaves his body <laughs> and then comes right back to him as yeah. he breathes the sigh. Right, right like, like, like they're like going notices. up. They're going up. And you can tell like something's not right. Right there. <laughs> he has that that you know you get that adrenaline shock where you kind of get that shake there for a moment yeah that's totally what happens so yeah even, even he, the best it happens to and then he begins for the uh breathing for the first time since sandstorm <laughs> like right there at the end so well true to his form as one of the top coaches of all time he oh, yeah. he had it handled I, I i'll give him that for sure <laughs> all right um i uh you know King Raisin was worried we wouldn't have the West Top 10 earlier in the chat, but don't worry, bud. We've got it right here. Top 10 teams in the West as voted in the FRC Top 25 poll. To no one's surprise, I think Citrus and Madtown taking the top two spots. 1619, Upper Creek Robotics in number three. 987, the High Rollers in four. 5026, Iron Panthers coming up in fifth place with their triple climb almost. Um, 359, 2046, 3647, 1983, and 1540, rounding out the top 10. Uh, good to see three uh, three different PNW teams in the top 10. PNW is starting to get some more recognition, I think, in the FRC community. And um, 
I hope that continues. They got like a lot of great teams up there. Guys, uh, does anybody on that list surprise you or maybe this the sort of that list? Uh, I think this is the first time I'm seeing 5026 up here, which is pretty great. So good, good to have them. Not not so much a surprise. Uh, I think it was one of the first big triple climbs that was attempted uh, this season. So they should. I think they should be up there. Right. So what about you? Any any surprises? Yeah, definitely. I'm very happy to see three PNW teams. Uh, and it's interesting to note that uh, none of the PNW teams that made this list actually won their event. That's what I was um, thinking when I saw it. Yeah, and uh, I'm a little surprised that Skunk Works came in above Flaming Chickens. I mean, they had an astounding performance this week, and they've been a dynasty team for forever. But uh, Flaming Chickens was really dominant down here uh, in Wilsonville. I mean, nobody could touch them through the quals. So it's a little surprising, but at the same time, not too crazy. Yeah. All right, so... um Kind of on to a, a little bit of a discussion. I uh, saw a tweet this weekend while I was, you know, going through uh, competing in Oklahoma. And uh, I think it was from the Looking Forward uh, account. And they were commenting on the relatively slow growth in scores between week one and two. And it kind of sparked my curiosity. So I decided to take a look back the last couple of years, week one and two results. And what I found was actually the growth and scores from week one to week two this year are very much on par with what we've seen at least the last two years um, with an average increase of about 1% of total scores. There are some other differences. Last year saw a little bit of a bigger increase in the auto quest ranking point. Um, you know, it grew from 33 uh, from around 20, I think it was around 26 to 33 between week one and two. And we've only grown to, 26% on the half docking RP this year, but um, obviously different challenges for teams to face. Um, but that said, what have you guys seen that um, might let teams continue to increase that growth rate this weekend coming up and maybe more importantly, increase their contribution to their winning margin? Well, with regards to the growth rate, it looks like things are pretty much holding standard for the time being, right? Like staying within that 1% range, um, which isn't that much uh, as a number itself. But like when you look at how it impacts scores, it's, it's, it's significant enough. Um, I think scores look slower because uh, we're playing with a scaled down point system. Scores are a lot lower in general because of how points were redone this year. Um, and it was so uncommon to see a double digit score last year. And now that's pretty much all we see. Um, so I think it's jarring to a lot of people, especially those who are new to this. So I don't think it's slower. It's just, it's just a bias of what we've seen in the past. Um, and I'm not sure if it'll be fixed this week per se, but as practice improves, uh, so will your match, uh, play, right? You just have to get into the groove of, of your matches. It's still, you know, week three, it's still a lot of people's first events. Um, even though we have had some people already play two events now. So I think, you know, people are still adjusting to what destination deep space looks like. Um, the learning curve is steep this year. It's less steep than last year, I think, but people are still trying to figure out how to get around the current metagame of playing defense on people. Uh, I think there's a lot that can be done about defense that people just aren't recognizing yet. Um, so teams that are out there, I think you guys need to start getting creative with your strategies or you're going to get, you're going to get oppressed at your events, right? Defense is proving fatal to some alliances. Time to figure out those workarounds. Yeah, definitely. There's some really interesting strategies coming up, uh, last week over the first week, and I'm sure we'll see more going into week three. Uh, but I would just like to point out that looking at these numbers, we're, truly looking at the average score across the world, right? So um, these aren't necessarily teams that have a practice spot we're looking at that are working on autonomous routines between week one and week two. And there's a pretty small percentage of teams that compete in week one and week two. So I'd say we'll definitely start to see a larger improvement between the weeks as teams start to play at their second events more commonly. And uh, I also expect that we'll see a larger difference probably next year and moving forward uh, between week one and two because there will be no bag. And so we'll see a lot more teams watching the um, live streams and then being able to make changes and improvements to their robot without having to compete themselves. 
Yeah, I, I agree with that sentiment very much so. All right, speaking of improvement into week three, we've got five more events in the week. Uh, oh five more events in the West this week. Bryce, uh, why don't you give us a rundown of what we got up in the PNW? Yeah, so up at the Clackamas Academy District event, it's our second Oregon event. Uh, should be a blast. My team's going to be there, Team Mean Machine 2471. Um, big contenders 3674, the Cloverbots, and 4488, Shockwave, are also going to be playing for the first time. In addition, there's going to be several strong bots from last week looking to redeem themselves with additional driving experience. Uh, a couple of those are 1425 Air Code Zero and 1540 The Flaming Chickens. Now, Bryce, do you think this is the year that they spell Clackamas correctly? I uh, That's a great question, and I really don't know. Will you be the, out know. there in the field to tell us? or <laughs> Will you Oh, be out yeah, there I'll be out there. Maybe okay. I'll mention it if I do a Behind the Bumper segment. We'll see. But yeah. uh, I know that I never noticed the misspelling issue until you guys brought it up a couple weeks ago. And I looked in our practice field and I saw two blue blanners up there on the wall that I never noticed said Clackham's the whole time. Clackham's blue blanners. Clackham's blue blanners, yes. (laughs) Yeah, they should be. So I don't know. Uh, It's kind of a tradition at this point. They might keep it around, but um, I'll be sure to update you guys on the situation. Um... Otherwise, at the Sundome, uh, it's a bit of a lesser-known event, but it's definitely going to attract some top-tier teams. Um, top bots who are looking to um, compete for the second time, we've got 2910 Jack in the Bot, 4643 Aim Bot, who are both coming off district wins. Um, 4911 the Cyber Knights and 1595 Dragons look to show off their stuff for the first time. And 1318 is Aqua Robotics Society, and 2811 the Stormbots are trying to see some improvement after promising first events, despite seeing some tr- struggles with reliability. All right. Well, up in the Bay Area, the tech invasion hit San Francisco yet again as 43 startups, I mean teams, come out to San Ignatius Preparatory to battle for the Bay. Silently looming over the competition like the Salesforce Towers, Team 254, the Cheesy Poofs, whose robot has still yet to be revealed. They'll be joined by local powerhouse 971 Spartan Robotics, currently the defending champs of SFR 2018, along with Team 972 Ironclaw, both teams looking to hold that title this year. Though the competition might not be the strongest, this event's shaping up to be a battle for the awards rather than the event win, as teams like 604, 649, 3880, 4159, 6418, and 6814 all know the real competition is with the judges and will be working hard to highlight their community impacts. The 5700, the Soda Cyber Dragons, is coming back with a Divisional Creativity Award from Champs last year. They could be a potential sleeper team for the awards game as well. We got six new rookies from near and far this year, two new additions to the San Francisco First family in 7468, the Firebolts, and 7847, Lincoln's Horsepower, as well as 7419, Tech Support, 7445, Garage Robotics, 7686, Alkalanes High School, and 7478, Istek from Istanbul, Turkey. All right. Just west of that is the Arizona North Regional, last year's early season premier event. Has lost some of its clout this year as many of the heavyweights that battled it out in 2018 have chosen other destinations this season. But some new out-of-state power host, powerhouses and the steadfast locals will still make this year's event one to keep an eye on. All eyes will be on the El Paso District event winners 118 who will be making the trip to Flagstaff, hoping to add to Flyby's Blue Banner count. They'll be joined from Texas by Trickster for Kids, who was edged out in the El Paso event by 118. 2240 Brute Force and 1339 Angel Botics will be making the trip down from Colorado, hoping to, hoping for a strong kickoff to their season, while 3230 Prototype X looks to do the same out of Utah. Arizona North has never been won by an Arizona Captain Alliance. If that is to change, it'll likely be 842 Falcon Robotics, who won the event as the first pick of 254 last year. Other local notables looking to keep the banners in AZ include 2403 Plasma Robotics, who have a great-looking machine this year, 2486 The Coconuts, 498 The Cobra Commanders, and 4183 The Bit Buckets. We'll move down south to L.A. North instead. Santa Clarita, California, and Valencia High School will host the new L.A. North Regional this weekend. While not filled with what most would consider powerhouse teams, there will be plenty of solid bots that make this event to keep an eye on. 
58-18, Riviera Robotics will look to carry momentum from last year into a solid first event this weekend and will look to be a favorite coming in. Assembly required, Team 5805 will hope to turn their silver medal from Orange County into a gold medal, though having played almost exclusively hatch panels, they'll need to find a cargo bot to complement them. 696 Circuit Breakers will look to make a comeback this weekend after a down, uh, down last year, as will 1868, who look to have built a solid, low-focused robot. Lots of diversity here with four teams from China, like 5453 Red Comet, 6803 High Panda, and 7595 Crosspoint. And with two from Taipei, like 6947 Savage Tamaz, I guess. I don't know how to pronounce that. And uh, 7645 NK MTC in this mix. Out of town standout might be 6353 Zodiac from Shanghai, who have at least one of the coolest looking low cargo bots I've seen this year. They might actually do some elevation, but I'm not entirely sure. But that intake looks pretty sick. For sure, for sure. All right, guys, that's all we have time for tonight. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. If you want more first robotics in your life and like what we do, all we ask is you let others know about the show. If you got a few bucks to support the stream, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand and are stoked to have you here. On behalf of myself, Bryce, and Aiden, and our producer, Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in. Thank all our moderators in the chat. We'll talk to you next week on Best of the West. Mexico is up next. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers, keeping fun loud, live, and independent. Pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now.